This skull changes everything we know about who we are, where we came from, and who we should call our closest relatives. Today, there's only one species of human, but did you know, tens of thousands of years ago, there were nine other incredible species that roamed the Earth? These are some of the remains that scientists have discovered. And with this discovery, one question has been nagging away at the back of our minds. How are we all related? Well, this skull might hold the answer. I'm working with Chinese colleagues on studying really interesting fossils from China, which I think will have a big impact on this story of our origins, the origins of the Neanderthals, and the origins of the Denisovans. It comes from an ancient human that's more closely related to us than any other species, and it might change everything we know about human evolution. Where did we come from? It's one of the most fundamental questions we ask ourselves. Every year, scientists get closer to discovering this answer. They dig up hundreds of ancient human fossils annually. Take a look at these fossils discovered in Africa. They're nearly four million years old, and they have a list of incredibly odd features. Long arms like an orangutan, gripping toes like a chimpanzee, and long legs like us. As the millennia passed, evolution gradually turned those ancestors into creatures that looked a little more like us. Let me introduce you to Lucy, one of the most famous fossils ever discovered. Lucy walked a fine line between ape and human, upright, curious, and on the brink of something new. And by about two and a half million years ago, humans had appeared in Africa. But those first humans weren't members of our species. In fact, one of the greatest discoveries of the 21st century is that the human family tree is far more tangled and diverse than we could have imagined. This means that by the time our species did appear, about 315,000 years ago, it shared the world with as many as five other human species. Let me tell you all about them quickly. On the Indonesian island of Flores, there was a species of unusually short humans known as Homo floresiensis. This species is sometimes nicknamed the Hobbit. Just 2,500 kilometers to the north in the Philippines, there lived another species known as Homo luzonensis. They had curved finger and toe bones hinting that they might have been one of the last humans able to climb trees as easily as they walked on the ground. Across in Europe, meanwhile, there were the familiar Neanderthals, with heavily built bodies and prominent bony ridges above their eyes. In southern Africa, there were odd, almost ape-like humans known as Homo naledi. Some scientists think that this species developed complex burial rituals, despite having a relatively small brain. And all across Africa and Eurasia, there were small populations of Homo erectus, an ancient species that had first appeared on Earth about two million years ago and was still present on our planet as recently as 110,000 years ago. To this day, scientists argue about exactly how these species relate to one another. But one central idea has rarely been questioned. Most scientists suspect that among all these ancient humans, it was the Neanderthals who were our closest relatives. About 15 years ago, we learned just how closely related the Neanderthals were to our ancestors. Using new tools to read DNA trapped inside ancient human bones, scientists began studying the Neanderthal genome. They found clear evidence that Neanderthals and our ancestors interbred with each other. In fact, even today, most of us carry some Neanderthal DNA in our bodies, left over from this interbreeding. The DNA also suggested that Neanderthals and modern humans both shared a common ancestor about 500,000 to 700,000 years ago. We don't know the exact identity of that ancient human species, so it's sometimes known simply as Ancestor X. So where exactly does this skull fit into the story? And why does it change everything we know? When scientists began reading the DNA locked away in ancient human bones, they found something unexpected. 
in a tiny finger bone and a few teeth, all dug up at Denisova Cave in southern Siberia, they found DNA that didn't match any they had seen before. It didn't belong to a Neanderthal, and it didn't belong to one of our modern human ancestors. Eventually, the scientists worked out how to explain this unusual DNA. They said it belonged to a mysterious group of ancient humans who were closely related to the Neanderthals. That meant they had to redraw our family tree. They argued that after Ancestor X gave rise to the Neanderthal group and the modern human group, the Neanderthal group quickly split again. One branch led to the familiar Neanderthals, and the other led to the enigmatic humans from the Denisova cave. The scientists even gave these humans a name, the Denisovans. But the Denisovans were still very mysterious. Think back to those other ancient human species we met earlier. Homo floresiensis from Indonesia, Homo naledi from southern Africa, and so on. We know quite a lot about all these species because scientists have unearthed plenty of fossil bones and even some almost complete skeletons belonging to them. For the Denisovans, scientists had a few tiny fossils that would comfortably fit in the palm of your hand. Things began to change in 2019, when experts confirmed that a jawbone found in Baishia Karst Cave, which is on the Tibetan Plateau, contained Denisovan protein molecules. Then, earlier this year, scientists pulled off a similar trick with this skull. It has just one tooth still attached, and when scientists scraped some of the plaque off the tooth and analyzed it, they found traces of Denisovan DNA. For the first time, scientists could actually stare a Denisovan in the face. But what do we know about this skull, and how does it relate to us? Well, appropriately enough for a mysterious Denisovan, its discovery is also something of a mystery. The official story is that it was found by a laborer working near Harbin in northeast China in the 1930s. The laborer is said to have hidden the skull in the bottom of a well for decades only revealing the secret of its existence to his family shortly before he died. His family recovered the skull and handed it over to scientists in 2018. Those scientists then ran some tests, and in 2021... You know, I was on that Dragoman paper that created Homo longi, and we're pretty sure that's a Denisovan. ...concluded the skull is about 146,000 years old. They also looked closely at the skull's shape and appearance. In their 2021 study, they argued that the skull didn't look like a modern human or a Neanderthal. They actually placed it in a new species, which they named Homo longi, which means dragon man. So with this year's news that this skull is associated with Denisovan DNA, it looks like we can finally give the Denisovans a proper species name. It seems that the Denisovans belong to the species Homo longi. But the scientists weren't finished yet. By comparing the shape of this skull with the shape of dozens of other ancient human skulls, they constructed a new human family tree. And this one looks very different. It suggests that many of the ancient human fossils from the past 500,000 years fall into three large groups. One of these groups corresponds with the Neanderthals, one with modern humans like us, and the third includes this skull and some others. It's a Denisovan group, or giving it a scientific name, a Homo longi group. What's even more shocking? We've always known Neanderthals to be our closest ancestors, but this new skull discovery reveals that the Denisovans are actually more closely related to modern humans than the Neanderthal group. And if that's the case, Ancestor X changes too. It's worth saying that all of these ideas are so new that scientists haven't had much of a chance to debate and further test them yet. But if that way of thinking is right, then this skull is three things at the same time. It's a Denisovan skull, it belongs to the species Homo longi, and it represents the ancient humans most closely related to our own species. But if the Denisovans really were our closest relatives, what do we actually know about the way they lived? Well, the short answer is not very much. Yet, to really understand the lives of the Denisovans, 
we'll need to study the tools and other artifacts they made, which we can only do when we find archaeological sites where they lived. So far, scientists have only found two of those sites. One is the Denisova Cave itself, where archaeologists have found hundreds of stone tools as well as some spectacular jewelry. But the Denisova Cave is unusual. Sometimes it was occupied by Denisovans, sometimes by Neanderthals, and sometimes by modern humans. So we can't say for sure which group made the jewelry. This is why Bai Shia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau is so important. As far as archaeologists can tell, Denisovans were the only humans who lived here. So any artifacts they find in the cave must have been used and left by the Denisovans. Excavations have barely begun, but already they suggest that the Denisovans built fires in the cave, as well as venturing out onto the Tibetan Plateau to hunt an amazing range of animals, including sheep, snow leopards, birds, and rodents. From cut marks left on some of those animal bones, it also looks like the Denisovans stripped the animals of their skins, perhaps turning them into clothes. Now, this might seem to be exactly the way ancient humans from the Stone Age should behave, living in caves and hunting wild animals for their meat and fur. But there's something about the Baishia Karst Cave that doesn't fit with our expectations of ancient human behavior. Its location. Baishia Karst Cave lies about 3,200 meters above sea level. Life at that altitude can be tough. Some of the archaeologists who have visited the cave have complained that the thin air gives them headaches. Why would one group of Denisovans have decided to move into such a challenging environment? Well, they probably didn't have to. There weren't that many humans on Earth in the Stone Age, so it's unlikely anyone was forced to climb onto the Tibetan Plateau just to find some space to call their own. In fact, we still don't know why one group of Denisovans made this journey, but some archaeologists think they were driven by simple human curiosity to explore. If the Denisovans really were our closest relatives, curiosity is just the sort of character trait we might expect to share with them. So why are we here and what happened to all those other species? Why did they disappear? Uh, that's one of the really big questions. But of course, when we go back in time, we've got this question of what originated the Homo sapiens lineage? What began our evolution? Even what continent did it happen on? It's amazing how much mystery a single skull can hold containing entire lives, stories, and questions about where we came from. If you want to keep digging into what other ancient faces can tell us about our origins, check out our conversation with paleontologist Chris Stringer. And until next time, stay curious.